So, welcome back, everybody. Um, hope you had a good break. We're starting the second block now. And um, Anfa, Unfa? Anfa. An Anfa. Anfa uh, will do the first presentation. Have fun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anfa. I make electronic music, uh, mostly s fully sequenced in Ardor, but today I want to show you something else. I want to show you a program called Bespoke Synth. Um, it's a nonlinear music production environment, which you can use to uh, make all sorts of different stuff. Noises, for example. Yeah, so I'm going to do a quick overview of like what on the high level this program can do. And then we're going to go into the basics. And I'm going to show you how to start making your own stuff in this. So here we have a, a pre-made, like a composed piece of music, which is made out of various sequencers, uh, sources of pulses, things that distribute these pulses, uh, synthesizers, because there's a couple built-in synthesizers. There's a basic uh, subtractive synth, there is a basic string physical modeling synth, there is a basic FM synthesizer, there's a basic signal generator, and there is some advanced stuff too. <laughs> well, one of these blocks is basic, the whole thing isn't as basic. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm also doing something with the lights. Um, so what I'm doing with the lights is, um, since I have this percussion running here, this is the drum sequencer, I thought, okay, I can just take what it sent to the drums and offset these notes a little bit, uh, remap, make sure that it's not outside of a range because uh, are we losing HDMI? Hey, look! I think... Does, does the DMX control the HDMI input? Am I hitting these notes? It looks like it. Yeah, so we have another light. Uh, it's quite a complex light. It, but, you know, it plays to the music as well. Okay, so what happens if I... If I... No, this... If I just don't send the lighting info? Oh, we still get this. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, no lights, but we still have blinking screen. That's, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, I'm sending a few notes and I've prepared a little project in QLC Plus, which is a program for controlling lights, an open source program for controlling DMX lights. I have a little tiny USB to DMX interface, which is, it's really, it's just a serial interface, but it, it has a three pin DMX plug at the end. So you can plug in and some stuff, I hope. Yeah, so I map some MIDI notes to some of these, so... Right, so let's, let's see uh, what's going on here. Maybe let's stop the sequencer and I'm gonna go one by one. So we have a, here's a pulser. 
This is a little module that generates pulses at a steady rate. Uh, then we has, have something called Pulse Hocket. This is a module that takes in pulses and then redistributes them to multiple outputs with random possibility probability. So we can determine which outputs are more likely to be uh, taken to others. Now these nodes go so to various synthesizers. We have a module called Note Creator, which takes one of these pulses sent to one of the outputs. And the first one, it turns the pulse into a MIDI note with a given pitch and velocity and the duration. And the MIDI note is sent to this synthesizer called Oscillator. Then we have an FX chain with a high pass filter and some reverb. Then we go to a panner, which the panner itself, uh, I think it has an LFO. Yeah, if I right click, yeah, there's an LFO. So you can see there's a lot of different things that are happening and the program is quite optimized for doing things, but it, it's quite quirky and has some unusual concepts. Here is our plucked string synthesizer. If I enable that one. So this module makes a random note uh, at a given frequency, eighth notes, and it can skip every one note or two or three. And there's a probability that at which it will play or not. The pitch I'm controlling with an LFO, which is here, is a separate module. So we can insert an LFO module on our own. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how this works. This LFO module uses a modulation type of drunk, <laughs> which I assume is some kind of noise. It's not Perlin noise, it's drunk. And I'm using this to get a semi-random pitch between zero and eight uh, semitones. And then we go to a note table, which is shortened to no table. Note, note table. It spells the whole thing. And this is a module that takes all a bunch of notes. And then for every pitch, we can map a set of pitches. So pitch zero, gonna play two notes. Pitch one is gonna play one note. Pitch two is gonna play two notes again. So when the random pitches come in, we can up the probability. Maybe the speed as well. So let me scroll to 16. Yeah, so these pitches are like MIDI note numbers. So these are, you know, from zero to 127. Uh, we can insert a module that will show us what is, what is, is it? Uh, Uh, yeah, then it would just feed notes 0 to 7. So I think, yeah, note table, I think it's made so that when it's bypassed, it doesn't send anything. But some modules are made to by bypass and send whatever gets through. Right, so these go into our carpless strong synthesizer, which is a plucked note, plucked string. Disable the filter. There's a pitch tone. This, I'm not sure exactly what this is, but changing it makes the, the notes kind of like decay in a different way. So I enabled LFO on that just to have it change from minus two to two over eight bars. And it does that. It modulates the sound. Mm. Let's see what else. We have a FM synthesizer. This one has three operators. There's a basic operator. All of them are sine waves. 
and there are some envelopes working. Let's try and get the FM synth to give us sounds. All right. It's quite tame. More modulation. Here we can change the frequency of the If we click on this dot, we can open an uh, envelope editor. So envelopes are like a standard module that just part and you can change the curvature. And of course, we can modulate the envelope because like, why not? So we can hit this pin button and then it turns our like little pop-up into an actual module where we can like change the attack time with an LFO, because why not? Let's do it over three notes, three whole notes. Same with the curvature. It is a parameter we can, is, if it's a parameter, we can modulate it. So there are crazy amounts of possibilities. Uh, there is also a, let's go for the big one. So this is the song builder module. What it does is it allows us to um, define some sections of our composition. By default, it comes with these presets, off, intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, outro. I just use that. We can add some parameters. If I click this plus button, it creates a new slot at the end here. And I can, for example, click and drag and drop this onto any outlined control. So these gray wires are like turning things on and off or sending values. So I can turn on and off this effect chain. And I de can define like for all intro, no, but it's gonna turn on for the verse and for the bridge. Let's say that. And then I can test different sections. Ah, one of the synthesizers is called metronome. That's what we're hearing now. So now we're looping over one of the sections. Oh, and it's a good, good way I can show you something else. So here we have a curve looper. This module lets us define a curve and select how much time does it take to evaluate the curve. And it's just playing with the project tempo and timeline, which is neat because I can take the output of the curve and assign it to, say, a frequency of a filter in the EQ. So the curve moves this EQ frequency. There's a noise generator somewhere that I'm also using because it's somewhere. It, it has to be there. It, it is there. <laughs> and you will find it one day. Never mind. So yeah, that was the song song builder. Maybe I can actually turn it on so it like starts playing its sequence. So you can like pre preview different things. But we can also play the sequence where we can duplicate steps, we can add a new step, can remove them, we can change their length in bars. And we can also define a loop region, which is between item 2 and item 11. If I go play this, it's going to start from the beginning, which is off. And here I have all the values set so nothing is playing. Oops. 
and then it's playing the intro. Now you can see our curve looper is disabled, so our EQ, our EQ band is also disabled. So this is going on. Here's a drum synthesizer. This is the synthesizer is pretty simple. It's just just this, but it's just you know eight of these. So it automatically plays on um, MIDI notes from zero to sixteen, fifteen, seven. Oh, right. And what it has is a oscillator. A volume slider for the oscillator and the volume envelope for the oscillator, and also a noise generator. If I change this, I'm gonna have a noisy kick. Underneath, we have a filter section. Here is a filter envelope, and we can define the start frequency. So, this is pretty much the envelope like, what value? the filter cutoff does the highest value of the envelope have, so. and the lowest one. You can actually make the filter, invert the filter. So this filter is, has quite a bit of uh, resonance. Right, so here we have a filter for the whole thing. Thing, I believe. Yeah, I think this is just for noise, and this is a low pass. Uh, and here we have a filter for the entire part, so kick drum. Wait, I'm wrong. This is for this is the pitch envelope. Sorry, that's the pitch envelope. Of course. This is the pitch. So this is the filter. Change the notes that these uh, parts react to. No, but we can easily remap the notes with, with a module if we need that. Plus, like, <laughs> right, so this is the drum synthesizer. And what we have here is a drum sequencer, which just evaluates a set of steps in a given tempo, and it sends these MIDI notes. So by default, it sends notes through zero to seven. You can like change the amount of measures. By default, it's, it's just one measure. But I have more and made some variation for before. Oh, there is no variation. You can edit these just by clicking, if you hold shift, you can drag and set the volume of every step. This allows us to easily get expression. You can even like draw the velocity curve. I have nothing set for the six, so it's it's silent. Not super complicated. Yep. Sure. Buy screen. There we go. Hopefully less blinking this time. We messed up our kick. I can't live with that. Hertz, by the way. Okay, that's a little. And here's the filter. I'm gonna go into super deep detail because there's too much to cover, and I don't want to spend, you know, entire hour just getting into the details of, of each sub module because there's just so many modules. So this is the drum sequencer. It also can randomize stuff in here. We can. If we resize the module, we can see buttons for randomizing every single row. So I can randomize row seven. 
we have here parameters for the randomization. Chance that step will change and being randomized. So we can very quickly generate some random patterns as well, or just for some channels if you want. So this is fun on its own. Here I'm using a note range filter. And the song builder uses this to um, cut off some elements of the percussion. So right now we can't hear the kick or the snare because the minimum is at two. So just the hi-hat plays. Now the filter moved minimum MIDI note moved to zero. So we're passing off through everything with kick and snare included. Now we're just cutting off the higher stuff. So no hi-hat and all. Also wrap things around so all the notes that are outside of the range are forced to be inside of the range. That's usually not what you want with drums. For the lights, for example, here is a pitch remap module, so we can say that I don't know, MIDI note 33 should be MIDI note 100, just specifically. If we open up the Mm. the preferences of the module there's usually some settings also which we can change some extra extra things for example drum synth has a setting for sending exposing individual audio outputs for every single part and these are the teal dots so by default, it only sends a mix of all the drums, but I wanted to apply some EQ to different elements. Here's an effect chain module, which holds a bunch of effects. We can add all of these. We can rearrange them, change their order, and they're automatically wired together one after the other. All have a mix factor, with mix being zero, the, the effect is effectively bypassed. And of course we can modulate everything here, so, you know, LFOs and stuff. Okay, I think we can move on from this project. So, uh, here we have something else. I have a MIDI keyboard. Let's go and do a little bit about uh, MIDI controlling controllers. So I have a MIDI keyboard and this is a synthesizer. Let me turn off the effects. What do we have here? We have a MIDI controller module, which takes input from my MPK Mini which is uh, this little keyboard from Akai. It's an old one, Mark I. This MIDI controller sends all the MIDI notes to this here keyboard display. If I shift my octaves. But we can also click with our mouse. So it's not just a display, it's a keyboard. I believe there's also a way to um, use your computer keyboard to play on this. Yeah, but it doesn't like block the keyboard input from other hotkeys, so it's uh, I'm not sure this feature is that well-rounded, but it's off by default. There's also a, a mode for latching, which means if we can, I believe we can have, uh, I don't know what it does show. We have a show scale mode. Ah, I need to apply it. Right, so 
bespoke synth has um, ingrained concepts of musical keys and uh, tunings and musical timing so we can um, we can set up a key and it's going to show us like you know roots and other key other notes i'm not very used to this feature so i can't really tell you much but the colors are meant to represent like what notes fit in your key <laughs> I don't know which key is selected, honestly, but I'm trying to play on just the keys that are accepted. There's also a module that I think estimates the key. Oh, white keys. I think that's a module that takes your MIDI input and ensures it always conforms to the selected key. Yes, so I'm just pressing. <laughs> I'm pressing <laughs> E on my keyboard, but it's <laughs> playing S because E is grayed out. So it's an illegal note in this key. So if you can't play in different keys, you can just play in C major or A minor and plug this white keys module and it's just gonna automatically make it sound like it fits in the key. It's just gonna skip the notes that don't fit. Just a perfect. There's also a note stream module which displays the notes as they come, like a piano roll. And it, um, it scales itself to the highest and lowest notes that we send to it. But we can reset it, then it's gonna show just one note, huge one note. Right, we have a note octaver, another module that shifts octaves of our notes. As you can see, I'm pressing the same key. As you can see, we have an envelope and we can trigger it with the MIDI notes. We can also trigger it with these pulse modules. As you can see, we have a brownish uh, input which accepts MIDI notes, and we have this yellow one, which accepts pulses. If I go hit P, normally this doesn't blink, but on my laptop it does, I'm not sure why. Yeah, I was trying to get something about with pulses, but I got something else. Here we have a menu on top. I can get a pulser and put it here. Shoop. Here's our pulses, and then our envelope is going crazy. Yeah, I'm like using pre-made examples because I want to, I think that's a bit more like quicker to get you started in like grasp like what is possible in this program at all, instead of just doing something from absolute zero, but we'll do something up from absolute zero too. Let me just reset the... So we have this envelope. I'm sending it to modulate a filter here. So you can see this Butterworth filter, it has a green bar going. That's the envelope modulating it. We can change here, like, how is it mapped? So you can see if I drag this high and low, we have green lines here on the slider that is being modulated. We can also grab and move the range here. If we move up and down, it like makes the range wider or narrower and left and right positions it. So we can control the range of values from both ends. So this is disabled. <laughs> Maybe I'll disable distortion. Yeah. We have a value stream module, which is cool. It's like an oscilloscope we can plug into anything. When it's created, it 
has this little output and we can just plug and drop it onto any control and it gonna, it's going to monitor the values that come into there. And this LFO, for example, is using note frequency. So the notes I'm playing are going here to the note freak module, which converts the MIDI note number into a frequency in hertz according to the current tuning. And I set this to the LFO rate. That's why it gets so growly on, because the filter here is modulated quite quickly. No filter. Right, we have our oscillator. Effect track. Okay. I think I want to show you MIDI controller mapping because that's a big thing. So the MIDI controller module here does nothing interesting, but if we switch the mode to layout, you can see I have here like a little, little something. And if I move some knobs on my controller, you can see that it gets reflected here. This controller has a, like two banks of pads. It like has eight drum pads, but you can hit a key and then it switches to switches the pitches. So I like placed all eight in this grid as if they were here. So what's this useful for? Well, we can drag any of these controls onto whatever you want. Like, where's the octaver? Here's the octaver. I can drag this node, click and drag, drop it here, and now I can twist my knob and I'm changing my octaves. Nice and wet. Right, so, okay, so we can map things of an, on your controller to any control in here. So like everything that, you know, lights up in purple when you click this, you can drop, drop a controller onto it. So that means we can really do a lot, <laughs> including like saving and loading prefabs, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite crazy. Right, so what, what we are in, this is a prefab, by the way. Uh, this is an, a special module that holds other modules inside. And you can also like turn them on or off. So if you look at the top right corner, there's a CPU usage along the frames per second. So uh, you see if I enable the first patch that we've, we've seen, my CPU usage goes to like 60 ish. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would be nice to get like a. Hold on, maybe there is something. <laughs> I don't know. There is a. There's global controls. There's a module that. Okay, so it wasn't the. It wasn't the HDMI cable. I guess it wasn't the, H the HDMI cable. Sweet. Does it flicker on stream too? That sucks. I'm using this module in the background to do these weird transitions because you can see I like hit a button on my controller and I can switch to a different thing. And I also set it up to play the music when, when I switch to it. And I can switch away. 
it was supposed to make a gentle fade out and then after three seconds disable the prefab so I save on CPU. This is the module, the prefab that does this. So we have a selector module here which is selecting where a module Oh no. Give me back. Give me back my image. Maybe if I I don't know. <laughs> no, I said, unfortunately, this laptop has only one. <laughs> Are there laptops with two HDMI outputs? I have a VGA output, if that's better. Maybe. Here is a module called Selector. We can plug and play, like, plug in different things. We can, like, Select how many options do we want, and then we have these dots. Okay. I guess I need a new laptop with HDMI. We, we can try. I don't know how it's gonna work though because GPU. Oh no, this is. Uh, I don't have USB C, you know. But. Woo! Hot. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh. Ah, so this is unexpected technical issues part two. Glad you made it. And we actually didn't hit any expected difficulties, so that's nice. Uh, still gonna plug the HDMI here. Okay, suppose I'm sending some image. Are you getting any? Oh, wait, I need to power this box too. Yep, give me power. Do I have enough power in here? Thank you, VGA. <laughs> Woo! Well, okay, let's not, let's not like uh, celebrate because my, maybe it's gonna start flickering in a second. Right, so back on track. Uh, let me check my time. Uh, okay, we have 20 minutes. 10 minutes, okay, yeah. Uh, including questions, right. Okay, let's go through very, very simple things. So here is a canvas. This is what you will see when you open Bespoke Sin for the first time. You see these transport modules where you can set the tempo, you can set swing. There's a lot to play with. This, some people say this program is a musical playground. And here is a scale module, which you can use to set your scale. And that's going to affect all the modules that show you a scale on the keyboard or filter your notes to fit into a scale. OK, so every modular synthesizer, first thing you do, basic subtractive synth, right? So. OK, we need an oscillator, a filter, amplifier, envelope generator, maybe an LFO. OK, first thing, oscillator. How do we add an, uh, no, a module? There's a couple of ways. You can hit the key with the name that starts with uh, the letter that starts the name. Why is English no work now? On this laptop, for some reason, it flickers. It doesn't flicker on my computer. So you can just say, I know something it starts with D. And I can just, you know, Dragonfly Hall Reverb. You can open your uh, VST, sorry, VST clap and stuff, plugins, LV2. <coughs> okay, but we don't know how this is called. Uh, maybe it's oscillator? Oscillator, not this one. Another way, we can right click. That opens a little menu, so we can explore it but we can also type. Ta-da. Okay, well, that wait, that's a synthesizer. So how do I get a, an oscillator? Ah, okay. You see, what you're looking for is called signal generator. This is one of the quirks. 
signal generator. Yep, so this is our basic oscillator. Let's connect it to output. So we have this output module, left and right, and a splitter, which splits the stereo signal into two. Okay, if I now up the volume, we get a little nice sweet scented sine wave. For now, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, we need our MIDI inputs so we can play, right? MIDI controller, no, MIDI CC. MIDI controller, bloop. Connect it here. Select which one. Let's go with this, because this has a keyboard. Okay, as you can see, we are sending MIDI notes. And the frequency on the signal generator is changing even to the musical pitch, which is nice. But we have no envelope, so we can't have an amplifier. The amplifier is built into this all signal generator, so that's nice. Okay, we need an envelope. Let's right click and type envelope. This one is violet. This is a control module. We have a control plug. We can drop it onto anything. Could be frequency, could be toggling the module on and off. Same with the prefab. That's why I'm how I'm turning off these prefabs when we're not looking at them. Our volume, nice, okay. Now we need to trigger it somehow. We can trigger it with a note or a pulse, as you can see. But we want a note. Okay, but if I click and drag, we're losing the connection to the first one. So, yes, I have a note, but the pitch is stuck. Mm. Right, so what we need to do is hold shift before we click and drag, and this adds a little tiny plus. Doop. Now if I click, it actually instantiates a new cable, which I can drag and drop, and plugs into this. Now, we have our basic, basic synthesizer. Just three modules. Okay, but we want our filter, right. So let's right click, filter. All right, let's ignore the green ones because that's plugins. We have a note filter and a note range filter. None of these are um, audio. Right, what you're looking for is called bi quad. Bi quad. And there's this effect chain in square brackets. What does that mean? Well, it means the module is actually an effect in the effect chain module. So now we have an effect chain. All right, so we have our filter. Now how do we route this so it goes to the output but through the effect? Okay, so there's multiple ways. We can just drag this here and then drag the audio output from this one and we have our effect. But this is not efficient. There's other ways. You see, if I go back to the situation from before, if I drag and now click shift and hold, the mouse cursor changes. If I drop it onto this and release, it automatically connects to the output. So that's faster. Let's go this back. To, by, to disconnect a cable, by the way, you click and then hit backspace. If you just click and try to you know, drop it into nothingness, it's going to snap back to where it was. So you need to be very deliberate and hit backspace to disconnect something, which is odd. Like I was struggling with this <laughs> first time. Another way to insert a module between two things is let's go and let this go, is if you grab a module and then hold shift, you see the audio ports are like pulsating. If I go and touch with this module, now it connects itself. Nice, okay. Let's clone our envelope. Right, how do we clone? Do we do like control C, control V? No. What else can we do? Can we duplicate and like, contr no, control D? No. So what you do is you select a module, hit and hold Alt, and then you click and drag. That's how you duplicate a module. 
Okay, how, it, how do we delete a module? Delete. No, delete doesn't work. You need backspace. It's very distinct. No, not delete. Backspace or bust. Okay, there's one more way. Th there's more one way, one more way to delete a module. You need to open these preferences, and here there's a button. Right. Okay. Uh, we have our envelope. Let's get another one for the filter. Once more, I'm gonna hit Shift to drag yet another cable, drop it onto an envelope, connect this to my frequency of the envelope of the filter. Now, sweet, let's change the frequency to um, square wave. Not sounding terrifically cool, but okay, we can work with this. Okay, so we can click and drag in here, but we can also click this dot and have a bigger editor. I think I'm playing too high of a note. Here we have a multiplier for frequency, so we can make it like, you know, quarter. No need to change, you know, MIDI shift stuff. All right, we can also have a high pass, band pass, a peak. Then we have a gain parameter. And all pass, which, as you know, just changes the phase. So when you distort something after all pass, then it's gonna sound different. So that's how you make a very basic subtractive synthesizer in bespoke synth. There's crazy other modules like uh, sample recorder or sample capturer and say a sampler whoops we can connect one to the other and this to the output our MIDI keyboard here I'm gonna disable the synthesizer for now and here we can record something Dip. Chip, chip it up. Skip it up. I don't know if it's working. Oh, I didn't connect any inputs, of course. So for input, you hit I for input. Yeah, and then we have input. Let's go with channel two because I know the mic is on channel two. And as you can see, when I'm talking, this module is pulsating. Ah, woo! Blaze Post is very visual. It like. The sound is making everything move. If I just do this, ah, I've already recorded a, s a sample. <laughs> All right. What about this one? Dope. Dope. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, I'm clipping. I'm clipping. I'm clipping. Okay, let's click and drag this. Can we play it in the sampler? Oh yes, we can. Like now, this is. The sampler. Sweet! Maybe we can record something that doesn't suck. <laughs> Time is over, okay. That's just the top of the mountain of bespoke synth. Uh, I don't even have any slides, because I just I'm crazy t this week. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we have any time for questions? I, I have one question. Sure. Um. Don't take this the wrong way. I know you understand humor. Um, what is the appeal of Bespoke for you? Is it the music making or is it the building? Is this like I'm building something and that is the fun and when I'm done I don't care about the music or is it I want a result, I want music in the end? A lot of it is just the process. Uh, making things in Bespoke synth is very fun on its own. 
I'm not very productive in like making music. Like music per hour output is very low when I use bespoke synth. Possibly it's better for other people, but the workflow is completely different than something like Ardor, where you just lay down your ideas. Mm. What is really interesting and unique about this program is that you can make it, you can perform your music with it using MIDI controllers, audio inputs and stuff. You can record you know, samples or process input audio live. So it's like an integrated environment where you can perform your music. So it's very interesting when you have a MIDI controller especially something with colorful lights, you know. It's fun to be able to, you know, map stuff and... I didn't go to f twisting knobs, but you can twist knobs and, you know. So it's very tactile. Hope that answers the question. I can give another vision, another answer. This uh, sounds to me like a modular, analog, analog modular system. So you can combine lots of lots of, lots of cables, lot, lots of stuff, and finally you can build your own landscape, music landscape. And uh, this is also uh, for me very interesting as a musician that you can build something that creates sound very orga um, for me very organic. So. You don't know what in five minutes maybe appears, but it makes something with the current sound you have in this moment. So it develops all the time. So it's very interesting for me, like the old synthesizers. Yeah, this is this is a living thing. There's a right audio button on the top, and when you hit it, it it the bespoke synth is constantly recording, and you will just dump the last 30 minutes of whatever went to the output. So. You know, people just jam in this and then they dump whatever it was and they enjoy the moment and what came from it. But of course you can, you know, sit and prepare a performance. Something akin to what I did, not exactly, but yeah, it's it's very much a modular synthesizer in that regard. Yeah. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, do you, do you know the game Factorio? Yes. Yeah, uh, it's a bit like this. Only yes, in exactly. In music, yeah. You have yeah. like you have your raw minerals, like yeah. your pulses and your MIDI nodes and your audio and your controls, and turn one into a another and split them and merge them. Yes. <coughs> There's another game called Mindustry, which is free and open source. Yeah, right. Unlike Factorio. So if you like this kind of stuff, that's I a good game. Yes, I can recommend. Uh, unless you don't have many many hours to burn, but <laughs> <laughs> it's. Okay, any more questions? No, no. Oh, bespoke. Oh, yep, sorry. You can find all my stuff on my website, personal website. I hope to make the project I've been playing here available there for download, but it's coming in the future. Uh, you can find my contact info. You can hit me up on Mastodon. Uh, Yes, please. Very short question. The sequencer that you were showing, is it possible to re-trigger it? So that y if you want 31 or 27, you can have that. Mm. Like basically, uh, like an input that says jump to start. Oh. Uh, there is a timeline in, in this. I'm not sure if this is what you're asking about. There is a timeline control. And we can... The answer is yes, Go because to start. Look, look at this <laughs> program. <laughs> now we've seen that you can do like seven something. Yeah, by the way, if you're interested, want to get in touch with me and people who watch my videos, uh, you can go to chat.anfa.xyz and there is a Rocket Chat, which is a free and open source thing, and Discord, which isn't. Not a lot of people use it. And Bespoke Synth also, ha also has an official community on Discord. And unfortunately, a lot of documentation is very sparse. You just need to ask people. Uh, yeah, so if anyone wants to help documenting Bespoke and Bespoke Synth, then I'm sure the community will appreciate it. I would do myself, but I have other priorities. Okay. Anything else? One 
more round of applause, please.